Uh, Washington Post has been shit again. Uh, Taylor Lorenz, one of the most infamous writers of the Washington Post, a, a writer who I, I feel like I need to mention this every single time, a writer for one of the largest national publications in the United States, doxed a feminist on TikTok or on, on Twitter called Lives of TikTok, and then went to this woman's house and then also the houses of all of her family members to harass them in person to try and intimidate Lib to TikTok from being able to exercise her constitutionally protected freedom of speech on Twitter. She did this, and she continues to be a highly paid, well-known international journalist for the Washington Post. If the Kiwi, Literally, in the history of the Kiwi Farms, nobody has ever done that. Nobody who has an, I can safely say this, nobody who has a farm account on the forum has gone to a person's house and then all of their family members to harass them. Not even like Music Biz Marty, who is not a member of the forum, but is like a, like a lifeless troll. Not even him has done this. And yet, for whatever reason, we just excuse Taylor Lorenz because she's a quote-unquote journalist for the fucking Washington Post. And people need to remind her that the Kiwi farm, if I did what she did, everything would be gone. I'd be in fucking jail for harassment or some shit or stalking. Uh, my site would be shut down. Everyone, the, the database of the Kiwi farms would be on some fed server right now. Like it would be over for sure. But Taylor Owens, she still gets paid. Um, however, she's getting made fun of cause she made a, a tweet a long time ago where she had door dashed herself like avocado toast from some faggoty fucking, um, like coffee shop or some shit or or what's the what's what's breakfast brunch some like brunch coffee store and it was a twenty two dollar order she paid twenty two dollars including the delivery fee and, and all that shit and then when it got to her door it was all smashed up and gross looking because the, the driver didn't do a good job or whatever and she tweeted about this like my my avocado toast is all fucked up at DoorDash and now um now that she's on you know the communist Fediverse instances, people always give her shit because she's so fucking bougie that she's ordering $22 avocado toast and trying to, someone like, no, really, I'm a progressive. Yeah, if you were a progressive, you would not be ordering $20 avocado toast. And then she defends herself saying, no, it wasn't $22 avocado toast. It was $19 avocado toast with a $3 tip. I'm totally like you guys. I'm a working man. People are still giving their shit. It's based. It's really, I love it when the communists um, actually stick to their values and eat the, the bougie, um, isn't there a word for it? Like the Romanians were like wine, a wine glass, champagne communist or whatever. It's like that. I like that shit. If you're going to be a communist, that's kind of weird, but you better be, you better be like a hammer sickle type of communist. That's going to call out, call out the champagne socialists and not the, uh, not be, Supporting that shit just because they say things that you like because that's gay. Also, the Washington Post, coincidentally, in case you were, were expecting something else when I mentioned the Washington Post, a uh, a beautiful woman named Natasha Tiku. I've always said that the the Indians are like the most unfortunate looking people on the planet. Between this woman and Jesse Singh, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's wrong with the Indian phenotype really just just a disaster um genetically speaking uh survival of the fittest does not mean survival of the attractive apparently oh we need the hamster total hamster visibility i got you since we're talking about the news and all we need a, we need a prof we need a actual professional on my screen right now so we can talk about this matter uh with the uh with the sincerity and professionality that it uh deserves uh, Natasha Tiku says, hello, Joshua. I'm a text reporter for the Washington Post. I'm publishing a story tomorrow on the year anniversary of Cloudflare dropping Kiwi Farms. Because it's, if you don't remember, this is one of my favorite little tidbits about the, the Cloudflare shit and how they dropped us. Um, after putting out an article about how they were not going to drop us, Matthew Prince released another article that was not co-authored by a professional uh, PR agent and said um that uh, that they actually were going to drop us and the second article where they said they were going to drop us or print said they was going to drop us it was like on a saturday at like 7 p.m on labor day weekend 
So whatever happened, whatever axe was dropping down on his head, and I continue to believe that what happened is that he was not going to drop us because he doesn't believe in that. And then because Cloudflare is publicly traded, his shareholders got together and said, you're either going to drop this site or we're going to sue you for, you know, whatever the fuck. It's that thing where if you don't act in your shareholders' interest, they can sue you or whatever the fuck. So that happened, and then he had to, like, frantically put together a plan for what to do with us. Did it over Labor Day weekend and then just dropped that shit in the middle of the nighttime. Um, it was like, at, I think it was at 2 a.m. my time that someone sent me a text message like, hey, Cloudflare dropped you. <laughs> and I had to like get up out of bed and um, and figure out what to do. Anyways, um, she continues. This piece will look at your, your, I love how she words, God. if you don't know, journalists are absolute scum. I say, don't talk to journalists, don't talk to federal agents. If you have a journalist in your family, you should make it known that you do not like them. You should not associate with them. You should not be around them. You should not invite them to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Same with federal agents. If, they, if they're like, if you know people in your family, you should make sure that it's known to them that they are bad people and that their life choices are not respected and that you don't actually uh, hold them to be family anymore. So uh, she says, this piece will look at your efforts to keep the forum online and other people's efforts to keep the site offline. Please let me know if you'd like to comment. I can speak anytime today. This is going to be a real fair and balanced article because she held that in equal weight. She's going to mention what I've done as well. Wow. Uh, so I, I assume it's going to be very sympathetic. However, I'm not that dumb. So I just said, do you still print that rag on a paper? If so, please send a physical copy of your smear piece to the PO box listed on the website so I can frame it. Thanks. And then I attached this, uh, it literally took me three seconds to search, uh, Natasha, Natasha Tiku on Twitter and find this really grateful that someone with undeniable talent and success like Taylor Lorenz is using her platform to expose harassment. These same, wow. <laughs> just just so good just so good these same tactics wish we had more language for than stochastic terrorism or gamergate uh have been used on the most marginalized with no one to defend them uh imagine you are trans and photos of you show up on the k apostrophe w apostrophe farms or you're black and you've been taxed by project v asterisk Brit asterisk s you can't talk about it without driving attention to the content that endangers and humiliates you knowing it will bring another cycle of online abuse yeah i guess when you say dipshit things uh people will continue to bring them up and if you try to defend yourself against the dipshit things that you did you'll just look even dumber uh trust me i know um but so i i, I saw this i'm like fuck you i'm not even gonna give you the time of the day um, and she did not reply to this, but did go ahead and post her article. So let's read the endless battle to banish the world's most notorious stalker website. So right out the gate, you can read this article headline. You can think, yeah, this is going to be really, uh, well-researched and really fair to everyone involved. Uh, subtitle, the anonymous forum known as Kiwi Farms keeps popping back online despite a relentless campaign by transgender activists and a former insider. This is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. And we're going to get to it. Uh, so this, these are the heroes. I love, I want to, let's say, Jackie Dives and Nick Oxford for the, the Washington Post. I, I don't know anything about Jackie Dives and Nick Oxford, but I know by looking at these pictures that they are on my side these people are chads they are heroes of our fine republic they are looking out for me and they're trying to help out the best they can because not a single person who opens this article and sees these two photos is going to think yeah those are normal people and anyone talking shit about them uh, deserves to have their constitutionally protected freedom of speech stripped away from them as brutally as possible. There's not a single person that's going to open this article and scroll past his images that's going to automatically take their side. So big, big ups to my boy Jackie Dives and Nick Oxford for being heroes of the Kiwi Farms. If you have forum accounts, let me know so I can give you Ghost of Vision trophies. I really can't overstate your uh, contributions to my my humble little forum. But let's read. I'm going to read this entire thing, because why not? It's 11 minutes long, apparently. Strap in. 
When he heard that the Kiwi Farms had been knocked offline, Clay, a member of the anonymous online forum, was flooded with relief. I thought to myself, this hell on earth has finally been vanquished. Founded in 2013, Kiwi Farms has been used to organize vicious harassment and stalking campaigns against targets, including Clara Sorrenti, a transgender activist known as Keffels, and Rep. Resentative, I guess, Marjorie Taylor Greene from Georgia, a far-right Republican. Uh, it went down exactly one year ago after Cloudflare, a major tech security firm, stopped providing services, saying contributors to the forum were posting the home addresses of those seen as enemies and calling for them to be shot. Um, this is just a link to the... So the calling for them to be shot thing, this is actually new information. Uh, to this day, M Matthew Prince has never, never never provided any information about what the actual urgent threat to human life was. It has never been stated. Uh, this person managed to get a pull quote from Matthew Prince about what it was. And apparently someone said that uh, Keffels has to be shot. If that's true, I have never been contacted by law enforcement over it. I've not been contacted by the North Irish police, by the Republic of Irish police, the United States police, the Canadian police. Nobody on this fucking planet with a badge to their name has contacted me and said, we received this urgent threat to human life. Life, and we need to know more information about it. So I don't believe it. Number two, if that is true, him withholding this information to send it to the police in the same article that he says that the police are acting too slow is repriving me of the ability to address this issue myself. So he had no issue. Like, it's just bullshit. The entire thing is a, is a balancing act. And I'll reiterate this again. Matthew Prince did not want to take us down. His uh, stockholders told him he had to or they would sue or they would vote him out as CEO or some other bullshit. Then he had to decide, well, I just put out a statement saying we're not going to drop the Kiwi Farms because for the very good reason that we're a security company and being a security company that's easily um, uh, forced to drop clients makes us a really bad security company. And other companies hosted by us are going to say, uh, maybe we should look elsewhere because these guys are fucking retards. So he had to come up with an excuse. And the excuse that he came up with was urgent threat to human life or imminent threat to human life. Actually, I can pull this up. If you go to if you want to actually see the error page. Uh, locale.wiki is not changed and it still hosts the error page uh, block due to an imminent and emergency threat to human life the content of this site is blocked from being accessed through Cloudflare's infrastructure for more information please see is blocked so it's just a lie to save face protect the company's reputation and also please the shareholders who um, uh, who are forcing him to act uh, but this is actually the first one I've ever heard anything about why the site was dropped. I, I don't even know what he's talking about. Calling for them to be shot. I don't know what that's a reference to. I always thought it was over the guy from Poll who posted an image um, in Ireland uh, referencing the Irish car bombings and the troubles. But I have no no actual clue um, what this is referencing now. Funny how the more information that Prince gives, uh, the less it even makes sense. But in the week that followed... Kiwi Farms scrambled to stay alive, jumping from a Russian server to a Ukrainian hosting service to Vanwatek, a Vancouver, Washington-based hosting and security company infamous for providing refuge to 8chan and message board notorious for white supremacist content. As it became increasingly clear that Kiwi Farms would not go down without a fight, Clay, who spoke on the condition that his ident be identified by a pseudonym to avoid retribution, joined forces with Liz Fong Jones, one of Kiwi Farms' fiercest adversaries, and launched a dogged campaign to keep the site offline. Over the past year, their literal group of lowercase i internet slews, trans engineers and activists have method has methodically have methodically chased Kiwi firms across servers and networks around the globe, successful successively persuading more than two dozen companies to drop the site. Despite this laborious undertaking described exclusively to the Washington Post. Damn, they got the exclusive. They got the deranged psycho tranny giving them the exclusive details about how they have failed to keep an internet forum off the internet. Damn, Natash Natashi Tiku, you are a fucking, you're the, who is the guy that broke the Watergate story? You're, you're the next one, buddy. You're going to make it. They're going to be, remember, they're going to be writing articles about you for the next hundred years about how you saved the Washington Post. Um... Uh, the site has endured showing up for months at a time, sometimes as a mirror of itself on a completely different URL or as a forum domain, such as countries 
in countries such as Poland. You know, the very, look at that claw. Look at that man hand, that enormous man hand. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm now imagining that that uh, Liz Fong Jones, when he's trying to shut down the Kiwi Farms, he's like the claw from uh, Inspector Gadget, and he's like all shadowy with like his shitty white dog, and in, uh, instead of the cat, and he's just like str uh, stroking it with his clawed man hands, like next next time Kiwi Farms, next time, and it's just every time. That's just the cycle. It's episodic. They could make a cartoon about it. Uh, the group's big ups to Jackie Dives once again for the claw photo. I really appreciate that. The group's Sisyphean. Ah, finally, we get some myth of Sisyphus uh, respect happening. First good thing about this article. Oh, he's talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about the trannies that can literally stop being mad trannies at any time they want they're the they're the sisyphean ones punished to roll the boulder up it's not me it's not me i'm not the one with the uh, burden with the retard task of pushing the boulder up the hill it's the it's the glorious trannies they're the ones that are doing the sisyphean task okay um the Sisyphean battle illustrates the lack of mechanisms for reporting online abuse, much less for banishing harmful content. It also raises serious doubts about society's ability to block any site from the global web, even one that explicitly incites violence. Show me a fucking post, bitch. Um, wow, I, really, what a shock that we don't have ways of just permanently deleting everything forever. If our democracy is not to die in darkness, we need to have the ability to cast as much darkness on the world as humanly possible. If we don't control the darkness, the darkness will consume us. That is the only way to protect the security of our elections. Um, but, but either people think that Kiwi Farms is dead forever or they think it's up and therefore going to remain up forever, said Fong Jones, the transgender site reliability engineer who has been targeted by the forum. Neither of those two narratives are true. Founded by Joshua Moon, a former HN administrator, Kiwi Firms evolved into a popular platform for creating harassment campaigns. Its users often fixate on transgender people relentlessly stalking and taxing them. At least they got the X right. At least three of its... You know what's weird is that when people complain... Uh, 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 when I correct people on spelling the internet with a uh, lowercase i, they cite the AP style guidelines uh, and say that the the internet is spelled lowercase according to the AP. But then doxing is spelled with two X's according to the AP. So this person has no, no excuse. It's not that they're sticking to the AP style guidelines religiously. It's just that they're bad at writing. At least three of its victims died by suicide. Not because of anything related to the Kiwi Farms. We just had threads on them. Th three people who incidentally had a forum thread killed themselves. But, um, you know, we're just going to throw that detail. Th this article, by the way, I think that the editor-in-chief or whoever the fuck is responsible for publishing this shit in the Washington Post, the only thing that he did is that he went over and he just deleted sentences that were more accusatory and actionable defamation as opposed to um, uh, just to keep the site safe. Or the Washington Post. Jeff Bezos save, uh, to be clear. Isn't it funny? Because there's a good chance that Natasha Tiku or whatever the fuck will listen to this. Isn't it funny, Natasha, that you, as a hero of democracy and a champion of underprivileged people everywhere, have to side with one of the largest, most powerful, richest billionaires in the entire planet, a man whose company has destroyed small businesses and ruined small towns across the entire country. Isn't it funny that you have to carry water for him in order for to protect the underclass and the underprivileged? It could not possibly be that you're a useful idiot and the things that you're doing are not actually helping anybody. You're actually allowing a billionaire tycoon to censor the internet. And this is a proof, a, a case study of this, that maybe once this is figured out, Jeff Bezos and the federal government, who he works with intimately, because we don't know, uh, the Washington Post doesn't make money. Amazon doesn't even make money. You know what makes money for Amazon? AWS, uh, Amazon Web Services. So their tech stuff makes, I think, like $100 for every dollar that they spend, which is amazing profit turnover for any company. 
But part of that is because Amazon has entire warehouses dedicated to storing NSA, CIA, FBI uh, data um, c confidentially. So Jeff Bezos literally enriches himself off tax dollars to the tune of billions and billions of dollars. And then he runs a media outlet called uh, The Washington Post, and he just carries water for the federal government. The federal government, I am convinced at this point, knows that the easiest way for them to censor things going through the Constitution is simply to allow private companies to do it for them. So the entire world gets smaller and smaller. More of tech is centralized every year. Fewer websites exist uh, every year. And... Um, as a result, it only requires a few key positions in those companies to for the federal government to exercise censorship. All they have to do is tell Jeff Bezos, you know, write a hit piece on this article to give it more media pull, uh, get the guy at Hurricane Electric to drop the site, you know, just a couple people, and they can completely and totally extrajudicially censor things from the Internet with ease, with ease, not even a problem to them. And Natasha Tiku, who... Uh, thinks that this is awesome and doesn't see any problem with it because coincidentally right now she happens to agree with what they're doing um i'm sure that this is not going to bite society in the ass at any point in time and what's really 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 funny is that uh natasha tiku's other articles are all dedicated to machine learning and ai and how those are big problems and how machine learning and ai are dangerous i wonder if it's because natasha tiku is also subconsciously aware that her job is gone soon it does not take a person of high intelligence to write an article like this if um in fact, the fewer people writing articles, the better. All you have to do is plug in Liz Fong Jones fights website, taking down two dozen providers, um, Kiwi Farms bad evil terrorist website, avoid civil liability, press enter, and then you have a long article like this that hits all those points exactly as mentioned and doesn't require any intelligence, any actual human forethought to break into it. Because if you really want to think about it, the human element of writing an article like this is the critical part of the brain that thinks, hey, maybe what I'm writing is complete bullshit. Maybe I'm on the wrong side. Maybe we shouldn't be censoring the internet. That's what a critical thinking person in a chair might eventually come to the conclusion of. So we want to get rid of that. We don't want Natasha Tiku ever realizing, hey, maybe I'm the bad guy as she eats her $22 avocado toast and drinks uh, a $10 Starbucks coffee while writing for the richest man in the entire fucking world uh, to help censor the internet. Maybe we don't, we want to eliminate that position so we can replace Natasha Tiku with a computer that just shits out shit like this without any issue whatsoever. Uh, without any possibility of it maybe going, hum, maybe I'm in the wrong here. <clears throat> Uh, wow, I really hope that this nightmare world that you're helping to create, the Nash Tiku, uh, really serves you forever. I hope that you don't get completely fucked over by it. Uh, okay, let's continue. Oh, next paragraph. In response to a request for comment, Moon wrote by email, do you still print that rag on paper? If so, please send a physical copy of your smear piece to the P.O. box listed on the website so I can frame it. Thanks. Really, really appreciate when people leave my comment in because it's so funny and it makes me look like such a Chad. Maybe my boy, um, Jackie Dives put that in there. Jackie went, went behind, uh, her back and inserted that comment for me. My Kiwi Farms deep, deep state operative in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Should have been the subtitle. <laughs> Jackie couldn't couldn't pull that off. Uh, the campaign against Kiwi Farms has been in earnest. Began in earnest last summer. Sorrenti, a Twitch streamer who became famous as a news star for trans youth, had been under attack for months by Kiwi Farms users, who said she doxed her address and swatted her home, filing a false crime report that drove police to her door. Uh, that is not true. In August, she fled her native Canadian and Europe for Europe and launched a social media campaign to pressure internet providers to stop protecting the farm locates iron, by the way, using the hashtag, hashtag drop Kiwi farms. Um, from her home in Vancouver, Fong Jones heard about the harassment against Sorrenti and immediately recognized the tactics. Fong Jones has also been targeted by the Kiwi farms uh, beginning in 2017, when he donated to a transgender nonprofit. Not true. That's a complete fabrication. Uh, I'll remind people in case they forgot. 
Fong Jones did not have a thread until 2022, maybe even 2023. Uh, Liz got entangled with the Kiwi Farms because a long time ago, there was a not, they didn't even name the nonprofit, by the way. The nonprofit was Trans Lifeline. Trans Lifeline did a whole stream on Trans Lifeline was a scam. Their current board of directors filed under penalty of perjury with the IRS that uh, uh, Nina Chabul and Greta Gasava, who were the transgender uh, founders of Trans Lifeline, had in your $340,000 over their time as board of directors, and the Kiwi Farms had called them out. Because the Kiwi Farms had to call out Trans Lifeline for being a scam, which it was, as filed by the board of directors of the same fucking prop nonprofit to the IRS under penalty of perjury, uh, Liz Fong Jones went out and complained to my email server provider, which was... um trans ip in the netherlands and tried to get the kiwi farms taken down i published um liz fung jones's email which was at liz f at google.com because he had used his official work account with google to try and scare this provider um with the authority of google behind him and did not succeed ironically so i published the email and then at some point google stopped work or uh liz stopped working for google i don't know why i don't know if i can claim any credit to that but i did file a complaint with his work and i said your fucking weirdo troon employee is harassing my service providers and i don't fucking appreciate it and then at some point liz stopped working for google but it's a mystery as to what actually happened by the way i found out that blake willis the 20-year veteran of zio france who was the one responsible for getting us dropped by Zio in 2022, immediately after Cloudflare dropped us, uh, stopped working for Zio um, at some point this year. Don't know why. It's a mystery chat. We can only we can only hope that maybe there is some retribution for being total fucking cunts on the internet and doing shit like this. Um... Uh, Fong Jones had been talking about the Kiwi Farms when she donated to users published his home address, the names of his biological parents, and a redacted copy of his birth certificate in a thread that included racist and transphobic slurs. Members smeared his online, him online, in an attempt to ruin his Google search results, then sent his employers the false information. That's not. Oh, did Liz Fong Jones actually confirm to Washington Post that the Kiwi Farms got him fired from Google? That sounds like a, a, a twisting of that. He's telling this person that we got him fired from Google when what happened is that this dipshit motherfucker sent, uh, uns sent unsolicited complaint emails from his Google email address to other providers. And I complained because that's an abuse of his fucking work email and that got him fired. That's great. Thank you, Natasha Tiku, for confirming my suspicions after five years, five years of not knowing. Now I feel very confident that uh, I did it. And that's why Liz Fong Jones is so butthurt because he he wanted to be a Google employee. But then the Google said, no, you can't use your email to harass people. Ooh, and then I got fired. But they get to harass me by calling me a big face 20 all the time. That's not fair. I'm going to I'm going to get them taken up from the Internet one day. Five years later, I'm going to get taken up from the Internet. Um, uh, those videos, well, no, though the harassment had died down, Long Jones still felt compelled to contribute to the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign. He made videos for his YouTube channel explaining Cloudflare's complicity in keeping the site online. Those videos soon reached Catherine Lorelei, a transgender IT worker in Norman, Oklahoma. Lorelei, I don't know what the issue is with them spilling out state names. I don't know why they truncate it. It's not like you're saving any space here in this long ass article. Lorelai had never heard of Kiwi Farms and was distraught by what he learned from Fong Jones' presentations. I shout out to my boy Nick Oxford for this beautiful photo of this wonderful specimen. Oh, nice high heels. When you're a six foot tall troglodyte in a dress, uh, you probably should avoid the high heels because it makes you look like a six foot six troglodyte in a dress. As if you needed the help. Um. Lorelai had been taking gender transition hormones for less than a year and had no connection to activist circles. Beyond wrangling server space, he had never worked on systems that span the entire lowercase i internet. Which one? It might be a very small internet or it might be a huge internet, like the internet. We'll never know. But he volunteered to help, starting as Fong Jones' assistant, before stepping up to co-lead the team. I had no idea I had these skills, to be honest, Lorelai said. The group began spending dozens of hours each week navigating the Byzantine network web of network infrastructure, trying to ferret out connections between no-name intermediaries to track down Kiwi Farms' new home. 
They then would send carefully worded emails to those companies' employees, even cold messaging on LinkedIn to persuade them to stop working with the site. They didn't. Uh, are they going to mention that Liz Fong Jones called up the CEO's wife in the middle of the night for a girl talk, or is that is that admitted? No, no, it's carefully worded. Okay, so let me get this straight. When the Kiwi Farms does anything, it's harassment, terrorism, stalking, incitement to violence, physical threats. And when Liz Fong Jones calls up people in the middle of night and when Taylor Lorenz visits people's house uh, out of the blue to harass them into trying to get Liz a TikTok silence, uh, that's just journalism and activism. Am I getting this right? Am I figuring out the protocol here for how they operate? Because that seems like uh, a bunch of bullshit. It's a wonder why everyone hates fucking journalists. Why our society has absolutely zero trust for each other right now? Imagine if, the, imagine if the roles were reversed. Yuck. Imagine, imagine if things were the other way around. Imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. Wow, what? It? Wow. Uh, the group operated in cells. Well, they. I think they mean cells as in terrorism cells, but I think they should be meaning cells as in prison cells. The group operated in cells in case they were doxxed, but kept track of every lowercase i internet provider persuaded to cut ties with Kiwi Farms. Moon had a few major advantages. After earlier attempts to take down the site, he incorporated as his own lowercase i internet service provider, acquiring his own physical hardware, network resources, and a block of IP addresses, making Kiwi Farms much more difficult to dislodge. It marks the site as a peer on the lowercase i internet, meaning Moon directly receives any abuse reports and is entitled to a presumption of good faith. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I'm not entitled to anything. I'm I receive zero um zero presumption of shit at this point. What a what a crock. When the team alerted Fiberhub, a data center in Las Vegas, to alert the company to the bad actor using their facilities, the center had said they merely provided the electricity and power cord, but had no bearing on the servers that kept the site online. Those belonged to Moon's hosting company, originally incorporated on the name Final Solutions, a Nazi reference. Final Fiberhub did not immediately respond for com comment. The group slowly discovered a network of what they called shit hosts, low end service internet, low end lowercase i internet service providers who work with disreputable sites that spread malware or offensive content, arguing that they have a right to free speech. But the group had an asset of their own. This is where the, the article becomes complete schlock. Like it, it stops having any bearing in reality and becomes like a fan fiction written by like a Star Wars fan or something. Clay had been a member of the Kiwi Farms in his teens. Underage BA, get the fuck off my site. He had been bored, seeking community, pressured by his friends, and going through a libertarian phase, he said. But he, following the suicide of one of the site's biggest targets, he, uh, he began to push back on the forum's creed that its victims weren't human. <laughs> I don't think that that motto actually exist anywhere on the site i think that's something that natasha tiku uh pulled out of her fucking ass i think that if a actually i think a robot could do a better job of writing this article because the robot wouldn't just create bullshit like that the forum's motto is is latin for murder all trannies it's really shocking um he withdrew from the site after he saw Kiwi Farms members turn their talents for doxing and harassment on other members. His goal in joining Fong Jones and Lorelei's group was to help the forum's users, he told the post. He pointed to Frederick Brennan, the creator of HAN, who called for that site to be taken offline after it played a role in mass shootings in Christchurch, New Zealand, and in El Paso. Brennan said he wanted the wanted to free the user base of that site from being radicalized, from going down a darker path. And that's sort of what I'm doing here. Um, I can tell you right now that when you censor people, they become more radicalized. Like the site probably had a very neutral opinion of trannies back in the day. And then after this shit started, uh, I think a lot of them now have a much, much more negative opinion of her trannies. Like if your intention is really to make people not radicalize, uh, fucking with them, depriving them of basic rights and getting their shit taken down. It's like a surefire way not to do that. Um, just food for thought. It's almost like it's an entirely selfish motivation presented by people like Liz Fung Jones and not actually a noble crusade to stop people from being radicalized. 
Um, having play on board was a game changer. One of the challenges in persuading companies that Kiwi Farms was a bad actor was the sites was the site's opaque language. Outsiders might overlook terms such as TTD, which in Kiwi Farms vernacular means total tranny death, using a slur to refer to transgender people. Like, did you really need like? Did, did Liz Fong Jones just not know what that meant? Was it like just a, a complete fucking mystery to him? Like, what? What's this TTD? Transportation Tycoon Deluxe? What? What? What is this TTD? I don't. I don't understand. Thankfully, Clay was. Thankfully, Clay was there to translate <clears throat> for Liz Fong Jones, who just couldn't crack the code. Liz Fong Jones knows Chinese and English, but TTD. Not enough words in the dictionary for this motherfucker to figure it out. Clay could translate the language. He could also show the Kiwi Farms users migrated to Discord servers, which is not true. Like, I'm sure there is like there's like a Discord server for the movie night, but I ban people who advertise random Discord servers. I don't think people actually do that. They might know each other on Discord, but there's no Kiwi Farms Discord server. I think this person maybe was talking about Telegram, and the author doesn't know what Telegram is because he's a retard. So Clay was like, oh. That's, um, Telegram's kind of like Discord, you know, and then the author's like, ah, Discord, I know that, that's where all my kittens are at. So they just said, it's a Discord server, is where they went to. Um, where they were more explicit about a planning attacks. What fucking attack? I want to know, if there is like a cluster of Kiwi Farms terror cells out there, what have you done? What have you accomplished? Everything... <laughs> Everything is exactly the way it was over a year ago. It's the same fucking thing. My shit is getting uh, like fucked with all the time and nothing has transpired to let any of these people. The only thing that's happened is that Keffel's got fucked up on every drug known to man and gave up. And now he's just trying to be a debate bro arguing with Destiny and Bausch and whatever gay shit he's up to. Nothing has changed. If I have a, I have like a, a cluster of terror cells out there, they obviously suck. <laughs> I don't know, not as bad as Liz Fung Jones' terror cell sucks, though, because they uh, the side's still up. Um, their, their attacks are just, I guess, laughing at shit. I, that's probably what they mean to say. Uh, he led activists to the threads most rife with racism and calls for violence, and he confirmed the trolls' habits of using the phrase in Minecraft to pretend an illegal activity, such as revealing the social security numbers of their targets, was just something they did in an online game. Social security numbers are not illegal. Five, one, six, three, seven, two, nine, four, eight. Oh my God. I just docked someone's social security number. What a terrible federal crime. That is, it's a bullshit. It's a nine digit number. The only thing that you can't do is encourage people to commit identity fraud or faci facilitate identity fraud, but a nine digit number by itself is not criminal. Uh, he was a Kiwi Farms whisperer, Fong Jones. I, I just love the idea that this freak is just sitting there thinking, TT, just stroking that massive chin. It's taken like 30 seconds for his, you know, you, you point out your index finger and your thumb and you put it to your chin and you rock it back and forth because you're thinking real hard. It's a 30 minute travel distance between side to side and just thinking, what the fuck is this TTD shit they keep talking about? I see that Liz has put on weight though. The, 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 too many pork buns just sitting there scarfing down pork buns stressed out eyeballs popping out of his head blood vessels bursting with rage trying to figure out what the fuck pork bun is this ttd just i need a translator i need a man on the inside to bring me the the details thanks again to my uh to jackie dive i want to know who is jackie dives who is this who is this hero that has been taking these pictures I want to know. Oh, they have their own website. Here, here's our boy, Jackie Dives. She, I should, I should get. I need to give women credit when it's women that deserve the credit. Jackie Dives is our woman on the inside. She is a huntress. She's a huntress. It says right there. Are these like? Oh, I thought that was her. These are just like random pictures. Where's the, the picture of Jackie Dives at? I feel like a fool now. Jackie is, has confused me. Whatever. Doesn't matter. She knows. She's our, she's our man on the inside. 
Clay, in turn, was getting an education of his own. Fong Jones helped get him up to speed about the backbone of the lowercase i internet. Um, NASA networks responsible for publishing or passing along content known as tier one ISPs, as well as the smaller downstream companies that depend on them for global reach. Specialists schooled him in navigating the labyrinthine telecommunications industry. They explained border gateway protocol, the automated routing system that picks best paths for traffic. And they explained how to leverage tier one ISPs, acceptable use policies, the contracts that typically prevent clients from using their network for theft, hacking, harassment, and other unwanted legal activity. Reminder that a service cannot harass people. When they talk about harassment in an AUP for an ISP like that, they mean that you can't use your connection to send emails or otherwise actually harass people. It is never harassment to post on by itself to post on a website saying something that someone does not like. It's just bullshit. And that will be shown, that will be demonstrated to Hurricane Electric eventually. In October, a group, the group, made a breakthrough. After rotating among web hosts, Moon had settled in Zayo, a company based on Boulder, Colorado. Fung Jones contacted someone at Zayo, a former colleague, who was alarmed to learn that the company was working with Kiwi Farms and it escalated the matter to senior leadership. I am so happy to hear from Washington Post irrefutable evidence that Blake Willis was acting as an agent of Liz Fung Jones because I could not prove that before this article came out. But Liz Fong Jones really needs that publicity, really needs that ego stroked. After all these pork buns and long nights trying to figure out what TTD meant, um, really just had to give the details to a journal friend for that publicity to validate, to heck and validate their efforts. Um, surely there would be no consequences of this. Uh, Cuba Farm Service were soon terminated. In statement, Zayo said it concluded that the farm had violated its acceptable use policy, which allows for termination of service. For Fong Jones, it was a wake-up call. There are less than 20 Tier 1 ISPs. Yeah, it was. That was a big watershed moment when he realized, oh my god, we actually thought that these ISPs, these Tier 1 ISPs that are internationally uh, important to how the internet operates would just drop random networks. That was like, that was like a shock like to everybody. I cannot fucking believe that tier one ISPs would do this. And so it goes, it was a wake up call. There are less than 20 tier one ISPs in the world and they get tons of complaints, spam, malware, harmful content. By and large, they try to stay out of such disputes, preferring to assume they are doing business with reputable companies. But the Zio experience showed that if Fong Jones could reach the right people, top tier providers were willing to prioritize enforcing their acceptable use policies. If he managed to have the right girl talks, then even the tier ones would fall. Wow, that is such a revelation. I totally agree. Threats loomed over the group. After her YouTube videos about Cloudflare, Kiwi Farms users posted Fong Jones' home address, social security number. Liz Fong Jones is not American. Liz Fong Jones is an Australian, Canadian, Chinese. Therefore, Liz Fong Jones does not have a social security number. That's actually, he's not, he's not American. He doesn't have a social security number. So this article is, Obviously factually deficient in the most obvious way possible. Crazy. Um, and that's bullshit, by the way. And driver's license. Well, how, how, did we, how did we get the driver's license? I don't think that's true. And if it is true, what the fuck did you do? Where did you post your driver's license that people could find it on the internet? Once Zayo dropped the site, he began receiving death threats by phone. Still, a year after the Cloudflare's decision, asking providers to drop Kiwi Farms generates controversy. Last week, the Electric Frontier Foundation, Electronic Frontier Foundation published an opinion piece that Tier 1 ISPs should not bow to pressure to drop Kiwi Farms, calling the move a dangerous step towards censorship. If the site in question were Reddit or Planned Parenthood or even the EFF, the lowercase i internet would be up in arms, wrote the Foundation, a nonprofit digital rights group based in San Francisco. Alejandra Caraballo, a clinical instructor at Harvard Law School's Lawber, Jesus, Harvard Law School's Cyber Law Clinic. What a title. I do nothing. I work in the janitor's office. <laughs> I'm really important. Trust me, I work at Harvard. Call that argument in this place. Fundamentally, the EFF fails to acknowledge how power dynamics and asymmetrical sets can act on its own form of censorship. Caraballo wrote on X, the sites formerly known as Twitter. The artist formerly known as Prince, uh, which is a stupid argument. Cloudflare CEO Matthew Prince, uh, this is the part where he, I know that he talked to this tranny, or not this tranny, but this Indian woman, 
has confessed the mixed feelings. While the company has withdrawn security services for the Daily Stormer and 8chan, both linked to real-world violence, including mass shootings and a deadly riot, Prince argues that revoking services based on reprehensible content sets a dangerous precedent. Well, if only you had fucking balls in the spine, Matthew Prince. Uh, deciding what isn't allowed is the gov- job of governments and regulators, not ISPs and network providers, he said via the messaging app signal. Still, he added, I don't miss having to worry about Kiwi Farms and their often vile content. Yeah, I'm sure you don't, you little pussy. Meant that debate Kiwi Farms remained online without Kiwi Farms or Zio or any of the two dozen other companies that have dropped the forum since the group started in September. Fung Jones says it was down to a limited number of lifelines. Lorelai, who now committed full time to trans activism, gets paid by Fung Jones. Wants to move on to other causes. Fong Jones is moving on as well. Clay and another one of the young members of the group plan to carry the torch. <laughs> Reflecting on the past year, Fong Jones says it's unreasonable to expect victims of harassment to have to do this work. It's true that Kiwi Farms keeps finding more providers, he said, but it's a finite list, and that's why we know we're going to win. Well, I haven't won yet, retard. So there you go. That's, uh, I think, one of the nicest pieces anyone has written on us because it just makes us look like fucking chads there's no evidence in there and unless you're already like fully indoctrinated to what the um uh washington post already believes it just says like it makes it look like a a, like a sisyphean task and all you get is the smug opining by a fucking weirdo tranny and that's a very cool natasha tiku sorry i've been mispronouncing the same the entire time because it's spelled wrong um anyways uh, I, I talked about how the EFF probably had uh, a, a security issue, pointing out this guy. And sure enough, um, the EFF was written anonymously. The, that last article that they're referencing was written anonymously as the Electronic Frontier Foundation. However, uh, Bex somehow called out Corin McSherry. And uh, directly, despite Corin McSherry not actually having uh, published the EFF article under her name, and it's presumed that it is her, and I have a feeling that this is now publicly known because of this. <clears throat> uh, the EFF and CMC Share specifically wrote an article basically arguing dead trans people is the cost of freedom, and even though, <laughs> I mean it is, even going through the police was less than the useless against coordinated attacks. They support Kiwi Farms over our spouses. I recognize queer armor, says uh, Temperance. He doesn't have a thread, but he was directly involved with the trance, was friends with them, sent them free body armor, etc. So he's a local in Antifa and Jason. Here he is directly naming McSherry, the author of the EFF article. Someone working at the EFF definitely leaked this information to him or his followers, uh, fellow lefty Twitter addicts. Quentin Guy is a prime suspect. Jackie Singh Sing has even interacted with him before. So... Here is your benefit for your diversity and inclusion EFF. You now have a guy who is your security officer directly feeding your fucking names to people so that you may be personally terrorized by them. Uh, and so all your all your good effort in making sure that the Kiwi Farms is known as a terrible abuser and a lawbreaker, even though it's fucking not, has been rewarded with people wanting to kill you anyways uh, because you're not taking their stance 100%. Hope it's fucking worth it. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofer. Remember to like and subscribe.